This video will cover Fourier series representation of discrete time uh, periodic signal. So just like um, this, this is this video is a follow-on to the continuous time video. Uh, so it's best if you watch the continuous time Fourier series representation first and understand that, and then as a second one come here because we're going to make a lot of references to, to the fact that this uh, process is very similar to the continuous time. And we will not repeat a lot of the discussions that we had over there when we were talking about continuous time. But the goal here is to present the discrete time and the differences between the discrete time and the continuous time. So first of all, much like we talked about the continuous time, we are assuming that our signals are periodic. And basically the general, general way we talk about the signals being periodic is that... Um, we have, um, we are basically saying that x of n, any value of n, it's going to be equal to x of n plus any integer number, k usually we put it in here, and k typically is an integer that goes from minus infinity to infinity. Uh, uh, times n and n is the letter used to represent the period of the signal so basically we are saying is that if you if you look forward however many n capital n from where you are you're going to get exactly the same value and that's based that's a definition of um, periodic signal having that then we know that uh, if someone was, to, if, if he needed omega zero, which we refer to as fundamental frequency, it would be equal to two pi over n uh, for us. Okay, so um, so that's um, that's the definition of periodicity and all that. And since since the x of n we are assuming is periodic, since we are assuming x of n is periodic that means that our x of n will have what we call a Fourier series in such a way that x of n can be represented as a summation of um, k over a period And that's notation, if you have not seen that notation, that simply means any period. You can st start from any point in your period, period and move one period forward, and that's what it is. So if you start from Z, 0, it would go to n minus 1. If you start from m, it will go to m plus n minus 1. Uh, so this summation of A of k, and as the same as before, these A of K's are referred to as Fourier series coefficient times E to the J K omega zero N. Now don't forget that omega zero is represented by two pi N. So sometime you may see this equation written as summation of K over a single period of a of k e to the j k 2 pi over n times small n okay so that's another way of writing this equation is referred to as the Fourier series synthesis equation and the reason they call it a synthesis is because that is used to synthesize or build x of n okay now um, so this is great. So if someone comes and gives me a of k's, which uh, then I can build a function, which basically says what I'm gonna, what a of k is telling me is if I plot this thing in a, if this is omega axis instead of t uh, or n in this case, then I can use a of zero at zero, a of minus one at the omega zero first harmonic or not the harmonic at the fundamental frequency and then a1 
will represent the magnitude of this at omega zero and then we will have a two for omega one uh, omega two omega zero and then we'll have minus two omega zero here for a minus two and this continues on now there's no guarantee that all the Fourier series co coefficient all these a's are non-zero but anyway it basically tells us that what is the magnitude a a's these Fourier series coefficients are telling us what the magnitude of our signal is at each one of these frequency at dc zero is represent dc no change omega zero represented the fundamental frequency second harmonic two omega zero is called second harmonic third harmonic fourth harmonic which i haven't drawn here okay so that's that's what we're saying we're saying that x of n can be represented with that so that's great so if i had a of k i can figure out what i can draw and write an equation which shows x of n the question is is there an equation that helps me do the other way and yes there is and much like we did in the time domain and i'm not going to take the time here to go through it how much we'd like we did in um, continuous time you just simply multiply both sides of this equations with e to the minus j k omega zero n and work it through and you will find at some point that uh, um, because it's over a period some of those things go to one so what you'll end up with is an equation which you can use to find a of k if somebody gives you a function if somebody gives you a function and ask you to find the Fourier series for that you'll just simply say one over the period summation of x of n e to the minus j k omega zero n and again you are you are taking taking this not watch this here we had a k was what's the variable here the variable is going to be k is the constant and n the variable is going to be n uh, that is going to be over the period so from 0 to n minus 1 or whatever whatever your period is times e and the other thing to pay attention to this is a minus where this other one the analysis equation the synthesis equation was uh, plus j k omega zero n so those are the things to pay attention to because of slight differences this equation is referred to as the Fourier series analysis equation and why is it called the analysis equation because in this case I have my function I don't need to build my function all I'm trying to do is figure out what it, the content is at each of the harmonics so I'm trying to find a of k for for in this particular case okay so so these are these are a couple of things to pay attention to now remember at this point so so the equations we have the, that I've derived here here's a little cleaner form of it written more general general uh, general um, format for you it basically says when we say k is let me expand this out so it's a little easier to see when you say k is over a period with this with this uh, way of representing it what we are saying is that k goes from any point m until m plus a whole period later because this is m plus zero you have to make sure that's n minus one to get a full because if you go to n you've gone into the next uh, next period okay and this is the Fourier clean the little cleaner writing of the Fourier series analysis equation now one thing we need to emphasize here and this is really important to remember is that in the case of a continuous time when you when you did the, the, these equations x of a, x of t was continue was periodic but your a of k wasn't necessarily periodic in this particular case in the case of a discrete time it's important to remember that a of k is also periodic and the nice the other nice thing is that it's periodic at the same period as x of n so if x of n's period n was equal to seven your a of k would also be periodic with the period of seven now this what what it also allows us since we do we we have this is this discrete only has values at distinct places we never get in a situation where we have to worry about convergence 
all all discrete signals will converge okay so let's go ahead and do this let's go ahead and see if we can um, do some examples so so let's say let's say um, for for example we have someone comes to us and say you have um, we we have a signal and the signal is um, um, we'll, we'll make we'll make up a, a signal to use uh, and, and I'm gonna make up something that's a little harder for us to, to figure out it's not as obvious let's say someone gives us a signal which is X of n and X of n is a summation of m some variable m going from minus infinity to infinity and um, this thing actually is made out of three delta the impulse function n minus 5m uh, plus 2 delta n minus 2 minus 5 Okay, just a sim simple function. Now, so the first thing, if, if and, then, and then they ask us to find Fourier series for this function. Which when they say that, they really mean a Fourier series coefficient, because once you find that, that's, that's really the only thing you can find. So they're asking you to find A of K. So the first thing you have to ask your question, is the signal periodic? So, so you're trying to solve this. So the first question you gotta ask yourself, is it periodic, okay? So you look at this thing and says, is, I don't know if it's periodic, so what we'll do, we'll start, if we'll start taking a look at this thing and see if it's periodic. So I'm gonna start drawing my X of N, say N is equal to zero, and might as well start at zero. So if, if N is equal to zero, right, so I'm at zero, and I'm gonna look at this, this function that is up here, and look at x of n, and say, okay, if n is equal to zero, what's the value of this? So we look at this thing, if n is equal to zero, then um, when m is equal to zero, n minus m will be zero, so this will be a three, but we can at n equal to zero this equation the second term in this equation will never be one so so when we look at this thing we'll um, we'll see that uh, this function actually it'll have a three at zero okay and when we look at one if this is one there's no way for any value of m to um, to make the inside of this zero so the function is equal to one so that's not going to work so n is actually going to be z at one is going to be zero then if you go to two then the value will be two right because if n is equal to two two minus two is zero when m is equal to zero since m goes from minus infinity to infinity that will be fine i'm sorry this was a little too long got carried away here so let me go ahead and draw it correctly. So this will be two, three should be a little longer. Okay, now how about at three? At three, this is gonna be three minus my five M. M is an integer, you're never gonna get this inside to be equal to zero, so it's not gonna happen. And then, um, and then you, so that would be three. You're gonna have the same issue at four, and at five, you're back to, if it's five, n is five, the m is equal to one, then it'll be a three. And I, 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 I encourage you to keep going and see if you see the period, but what you'll find, it's a period. Okay, the, this is a periodic signal, and the period is equal to five. So now the question is, how do I, how do I find a of k? You say, okay, all I have to do is use the analysis equation to find A of K. I already have this, so it's basically gonna be A of K, I'm gonna just write the equation, is equal to one over N, okay? And a summation over a period, N over a period of, uh, and then X of N, E to the minus J, 
k omega zero n. Okay, so so now we're going to work on this thing. I have the n, so so the, the other thing would be what is omega zero for this uh, for this signal. So that would be the kind of the next thing I gotta figure out. Uh, so 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 if n is equal to five, what what is my omega zero? So um, that would basically, I know that omega zero is two pi over n. So, or, or another way of putting that, right, if I put the five in there, it's gonna be two over five pi, okay? So now I'm gonna come back here. n is five, so this would be one over five summation of n going, and I'm gonna pick this period, might as well pick the easiest period I can. I can literally start anywhere, but for this one, I think we'll just start at n equal to zero to four. Remember, you don't wanna to go to five because that would be the next period. You only have five items in this five, your period is only five, so you're gonna have five items only in this. So you're gonna go from zero to four, and then x of n, what's x of n? Well, x of n, we don't have one value, so we have to kind of think about it and we'll come back and deal with x of n in a, in a minute. And then e to the minus j, k I can't deal with because j, k is just whatever a of k is. And omega zero is two pi, two fifth of pi, and then n in there. So now all I have to do to find a of k is expand this summation is gonna be one fifth. So x of n, right, n is equal to zero. If n is equal to zero, this is gonna be e to the zero, plus one fifth x of one. I'm just walking through the summation, expanding the summation. e to the minus j k two pi over five, um, plus one fifth x of two, Uh, hopefully you're seeing kind of the pattern uh, shows up here, x, k, two pi over five, and um, plus one fifth x of three, e to the minus j, k. Uh, actually in this case, uh, the n is equal to two, so I have to multiply them again by two here. So this is gonna be j, k, two pi, over five, my n is three here, plus one fifth. Let's make it a little smaller so we can fit everything in. One fifth x of four, e to the minus j k two pi over five times four, and n here was three, okay? So now let's go back and take a look at what we got. So I know x of zero is three, so the first term will be three fifth e to the zero is one. So we're done with that one. The second term x of one is zero, so I can ignore it. X of two is two, so it's gonna be, oops, two fifth e to the minus j k four pi fifth, okay? And then, of course, three and four are both zero, so they go away, x of three and x of four. So this is my a of k, okay? So I can go off and plot this one if I want to, just evaluate this thing at, um, this is omega. And so for the zero, I evaluate it as k is equal to zero. And if I evaluate it at k equal to zero, it's gonna be three fifth plus two fifth, right? So it's gonna be three fifth plus two fifth. And then at omega zero, k is equal to one, so I just basically plug k equal to one and find out what the value is. And at k minus one, do the same thing, and that gives me a of minus one, a of one. And as you can see, this one doesn't go to zero, it can con for a long, long, long time. So it's got all kinds of, oh, not long, long time, it's gonna start repeating itself every five. Remember, this, this thing is also, since x of n was periodic with the period of five, a of k would be periodic with period of five as well, okay? That brings us to the end of this uh, presentation, which was on, 
on the Fourier series representation of a discrete time periodic signal. And I want to emphasize before we go off the two differences that we had here. One, in the discrete signal, you do not have to worry about convergence when you take a Fourier series. The other thing you don't, you have to, re re the difference between a continuous time and discrete is that in the discrete space, if, and since x of n is periodic, a of k will also be periodic. Great. See you on the next slide.